Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and this is going to be our first video on just kind of getting started, getting a little familiar with the interface, and future videos will go way more in depth in all the different features so that you can become as proficient as possible with DaVinci Resolve. Now, everything I'm going to show you today, you can do in the free version. And in fact, 99% of the videos that we do, you can do in the free version. There's only a few things that you need the studio version for, and we'll talk about those in another video. So let's go ahead and get started. When you launch DaVinci Resolve, you're going to see the project manager screen. Here I've got existing projects. I have a blank untitled project. I have some titles that I'm working on. That's a whole video in and of itself. So I'm just going to double click on Untitled Project and it opens up a new project for me. Now down at the bottom, there's several different icons. And depending on your screen resolution, some of these will look a little bit different. They may be labeled with what they are. So I'm just going to go over them. I have my screen reduced down for the sake of recording to make things easier. So here the first one is media. That's where we manage all of our assets. The second one is edit, which is the screen we see here, which is editing the timeline and doing certain effects and things to the timeline, such as zooming, rotating, cropping, some of those types of things. Then we move to the color tab, which is Coloring is the key thing there, but also image stabilization, noise reduction, special effects, uh, some other things that we can do in the coloring. The next one is called Fairlight. That's for higher end audio production, audio mixing, and we'll get into that. That's its own video in and of itself. We're not going to do that for the basic things of just putting video to music. We don't need to use Fairlight. And then the last one is going to be delivery, where we do our output and decide how we want to save the files. So the first thing we need to do is get some footage in here. So we're going to go to the media tab and I'm going to browse over to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Louviers, which is a little city around here. It had a big factory in it at one point. And I'm just going to Command A, select one, Command A, grab all the footage, and just drop it into my media pool. Now, in this case, it says my clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. Would I like to change it? Well, in most cases, yes, I want to change it, unless I'm specifically doing something. Maybe I, I know I have 30 frames per second footage that I'm putting in a 24 frames per second timeline. Otherwise, if I'm just going to be editing from one shoot, well, I know all that footage is probably going to be the same, so I'll go ahead and let it update the timeline so that I know what I'm uh, working with here. Now, before I get going too far, I'm going to go over to the bottom right-hand corner here and go to the project settings. I'm going to double-check that my timeline frame rate, which is 29.97 frames per second, matches my playback frame rate. If these two don't match here, you can get some weird audio glitching and it, it just won't be good for performance. So we're going to stick to those guys right there. So I'll, I can cancel out of that. And the next thing will be to go over to the edit page and start assembling some of this footage. Now a couple different ways of putting footage in the timeline is I can just drag a clip down in here and then once I have it, I can change the start and end points and I can move things around. A better way of doing that is to double click on one of the, the files that you want to work with. So I'm going to grab this clip here and now I'm going to scrub through it and I'm going to see what I have because I may not need the whole thing. I may just want a snippet of it. When I get to a starting point, I'm just going to hit I to mark the end point. Then I'm going to see how far do I want that clip to go and see where it starts to go off frame. Maybe I don't want to go past that. So I'm going to back it up just a hair and hit O for the out point. Now when I go to drag that, I'm going to click down and hold and I can drag that down onto the timeline. There, now I have just that piece that I selected and I can move on to my next clip. 
there we go, a little playback over there on the right hand side. And I'll just go ahead and add another clip here, see what I've got. Okay, there's a good in point. And I'll mark that out point and I'll drag that down. Now when I drag it down in here, I can overwrite part of the original, I can move it off to the side. I have a lot of different control on what I want to do. My favorite thing is this magnet icon. Now I can enable that with the N key, N for Nancy, not N for snapping. Not really sure about that one, or just click on the icon. Now, when I go to put it in, it's going to snap right to the end of that next clip. And I'm just going to string my footage along as need be to create my video. Same thing with putting in music. I can just find that music that I want, drag it onto the audio timeline, and get going. The next tab over here is going to be the color tab. And this is where we can adjust the colors of the, the image, make our own look that we want, however we want to fine tune that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to these color wheels here. And let me get rid of these clips so we can see this footage a little bit better. There we go. And I'm going to turn on my scopes. So over here on the right hand side you see this icon for scopes there. And I've got my RGB parade. So just looking at this I can see it's, it's not very well saturated and it's there's not a whole lot of highlight there and it's a little dark on some sections. Going over to these color wheels, lift, gamma, and gain, you can think of these as like shadows, midtones, and highlights. And I want to pull those my gain up, add some brightness to it. I'm going to pull my lifts down so I get a little bit more dynamic range out of that. And maybe add a little midtone there. That's looking pretty good. Add just a little shade of contrast there. And then on the bottom left, you see this one and two. I'm gonna click on the two there and use the color boost. And what color boost is gonna do is it's going to increase the saturation of unsaturated sections, where saturation will boost everything and anything that's already saturated may get overdone. Color boost is gonna focus on things that aren't very saturated. So give it a little more natural of a look there. So I can pump that up a little bit. Now see what that did here is it turned my shadows kind of blue. So I can come over here to my lift which again like I mentioned was my shadows and I can just pull the blues down out of that. If I go the other way you can see what happens. I'll just pull some of that blue right out of my shadows and uh, there we go. So that's a little introduction to color grading. Fairlight, as I mentioned, uh, is going to be for audio. We're not going to deal with Fairlight today. I'm just giving you an overview of how some of the things work. In the upper right hand corner here we have nodes and a node is in its simplest form you can think of it as a layer. It's, it's not. It's way more powerful than layers that are in Photoshop. You can have multiple nodes and each node can have a different application to it. I can have my color grading on one, my sharpening on another, special effects on another. We're going to get into that and as you're getting started don't even worry about nodes. Don't even think about them. You don't need them right off the bat. You can do all your corrections without having to worry about nodes and then as we progress on into future videos you'll see just how powerful they can be and not as confusing as it looks. Finally we're going to go over to our deliver page and we've got some options over here. I'm going to get rid of these clips. So a little bit more real estate to work with. Okay, on the left here we have video. So what format do we want it in? I'm just going to go and select H.264 to put this on uh, probably YouTube. You know, if that's where my output's going to go. What resolution I want, the frame rate I want. A couple other advanced options there. Go over to the file give it a custom name and I'm going to say first video and then click on add to render queue. Now if this is the first output I've done on this project it's going to ask me where do I want to put that. I'm just going to go ahead and select my desktop and hit OK. Now it hasn't done anything yet. If you notice over on the right hand side we have a render queue. 
So if I'm busy working all day, I can put together a bunch of different videos that I'm working on. And before I go to bed for the night, start them all rendering and then come back in the morning and have them all finished. So to start that render queue, you're going to select all the different ones that are in your render queue and hit start render. And that's it. We uh, can minimize DaVinci Resolve here. Go over to our first video here. And there we have our first video put together with DaVinci Resolve. I hope you like these videos and stay tuned for lots more. We got a lot of them scheduled to come out. And special thanks to our sponsor, Multicopter Warehouse. Multicopter Warehouse is the nation's leading DJI reseller and authorized repair center. Check them out at multicopterwarehouse.com. Again, thanks for watching. Please click that subscribe button and hit that like button if you want. We definitely appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you around next time. Bye-bye.